what's up chess amigos let's see if we can do a bit better in this game we got a draw in the last game a little bit of a disappointment basically came down to like two bad moves where the advantage was basically lost um uh, but let's see if we can do better this game playing as black we're gonna play the Karakon defense the usual opening um okay so, not a huge fan of when the opponent doesn't like to trade off or push. I like to get the light square bishop active, but never really has a good place to go. I'm always a little uncertain of what to do in this position, uh, if I'm being completely frank. Hmm. Yeah, it makes the development really tough. If I lock it in, I feel like this bishop is just going to be stuck forever. Hmm. What to do? <laughs> oh, man. I don't really like playing this Fanchetto thing. Bishop f7 and then getting the knight out. Hmm. I think this has to be done, unfortunately. I could be wrong, but. Opponent's playing well so far. What country is this? Oh, Austria. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, I don't see opponents play this, the sort of a e4, d4, knight, c3 idea against a Karakon very often. So this is pretty new to me. Pretty new to me. How long did I spend on that? A minute? Not bad. Not bad. Pretty exciting way to start the game. <laughs> I need to go read up on what the response to this is. Yeah, because the light square bishop can't go g4, can't go f5. The knight can't really go uh, f6 because of e5. So it's a bit tricky, and I believe I'm just losing a pawn this way. Hmm. I'm losing a pawn, but how do I punish it? I mean, he's making two knight moves here, so I guess I just punish with e6. Just try to kick his knight. Yeah, because basically he kind of only moves his knight around here if he takes this pawn, so... I know taking this pawn seems, like, really tempting. But if I had to guess, I don't think it's actually the best move. Yeah, because now you're just... you're. Your knight's just kind of prancing around the board and you haven't developed anything else. Well, besides this pawn, I guess, on d4, but... Yeah. So... Hmm. Hmm. I wonder how he can punish this. Seems like there's a handful of decent moves here. There's like b4 check. I don't think that's very good. There's uh, d6 and attack this knight. And he's just trading off. I think I'm just going to play the next best developing move. Actually... It's a bit tricky. Tricky, this position. I'm just going to play f6. Don't think about it too hard. I just want to castle ASAP. 
and just get my pieces out. That's really all I want to do here. I think dark square bishop e7 is still looking like the best bet. And then probably just getting the knight out to c6 is fine. Kind of prevents the queen from going out here. Mm, this is fine. I think he's kind of giving me an opportunity to castle, so... I like that I'm not going to be running into any funny business along this. A4 to E8, light square diagonal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like he's trying to scope this pawn here. Um, so I'm almost tempted to play... Let's see, I can either defend that. I can either defend it, block it in with something like... Um, Knight d5. Or would I rather block it with a knight? I wonder if it's better to block in with a knight or get the queen out. Hmm. There's some options here. I kind of like attacking his queen. I like the idea of going for the queen attack. Yeah, c7, queen d7, or bishop c6 both seem like good moves. I'd prefer to keep the queen here and just defend the dark square bishop in the meantime. Um, but this diagonal seems pretty good for the light square bishop. So I think I'll just play that, and it's a bit of a threatening move. I'm sure he's going to just go g3 with his queen. Also, I am just kind of attacking this pawn at this point as well. It would be really fun to harass this side of his board. I have knight e4 next, if he goes g3, I can't draw my arrows today. <laughs> Sederman. Yeah, I wonder if recapturing the pawn on d4 is going to be the play if he goes... Well, no, if he goes g3, I kind of have to protect that g7 pawn, huh? Yeah, that has to be done. I'm glad I'm starting to get better about recognizing the attack on the b7 pawn here. Um, that's like a common thing that I tend to fall for. And now that I look at it, maybe just developing the knight was the better move. Yeah, so I do have this fork next. Well, I have to be really careful. I think I have to play g6 in this case. Um, just because I'm losing this pawn and I don't want to backtrack this dark square bishop, so... Let's think about this. Hmm. I think g6 has to be played, huh? Yeah, that's fine. Probably knight e4 next. Oh, unless he plays like bishop d3 or something.
Yeah, we're coming up on move 10 and we're still not castled. But I kind of go back and also he hasn't developed uh, two of his pieces yet. Then again, I haven't developed one of mine. Um, but yeah, I kind of do go back and forth about like when the opponent has so much hurling down the king side. Like maybe it is better to develop queen, queen side. Did I say develop? I mean castle. Castle queen side. Maybe someone can give me an insight on that. I'm curious. Yeah, so I think this is pretty good for me. Um, I don't think he has a great way to defend this. Um, this fork seems really good. Yeah, he's just defending the pawn there. But his king is very exposed. I think removing this dark square bishop is going to be really good. Um, how does he really defend that too? Hmm. I don't think he can save this bishop. I guess he'd have to go like, oh yeah, queen there. Yeah, that's fine. So I wonder if there's like a good way to abuse this somehow, just besides just taking the bishop. Hmm. I don't know. It seems pretty good. Um, and I think, yeah, so like I can pin this pawn essentially now and then continue to harass his queen here. So, and f6 seems like a pretty good square for the dark square bishop. Um, I want to get the knight out eventually, but I don't want to block the queen from this open file here. Also, castling seems okay. But I don't know, pinning this pawn just seems really good. Maybe he'd have to go like 92 or something to defend that. If he goes 92, I can just castle. So yeah, I know he's like up a piece here, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty good too. Hmm. I could pin his knight. Actually, if I pin his knight, and if he develops, or excuse me, if he protects with the pawn here, I can just take his rook, which seems pretty good. Hmm. Interesting ideas here. I have to castle next move, I think. It would be kind of interesting to castle queenside and just get the rook on the same. Same file as his rook here. Oh, wow. That's really good for me, isn't it? Doesn't this just pin his rook? Am I missing something? Can you just pin his rook? No, seriously, what am I missing here? That seemed like a really bad move. I'm just winning the rook here. Right? Am I missing something? Defended. Can't move. Nothing there. And he can't defend this. Yeah, I'm just winning a rook for a bishop here. It's pretty good. He still hasn't developed his pieces. I need to get my knight out in castle already. I've been talking about that for ages, but I don't know. Going for the pin on the rook just seems like really good. So. So I'll basically be up. Let's see. I'm going to gain two points of material for this. So I'll be up 
four points of material. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. I mean, even this, he just loses a pawn this way too. Or honestly, I could even just go for the queen trade at this point, and I think I'd be in a pretty good spot. You take with the king, really. Why though? <laughs> Why? I wonder if I just go this way. Ugh. Take with the bishop. Kind of tempted to just take with the bishop so I can get my knight out. But the check just seems really good. I can win a pawn out of this. If he wants to trade off, I'll actually be thrilled. I think he's just going to block in with the light square bishop here. Um, it's a really good chance for me to castle here. I don't know why he played rook d2. That just seemed like a really bad move. Hmm. Wouldn't it be something to take this pawn? Oof, taking this pawn, man. That just seems really good. Oh, he has this. Oh, I do need to be careful about that. Oh, yeah, he is threatening this rook. Yeah, I should be careful about that. I think I'm just going to go ahead and castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I imagine he'll defend. If he gets his light square bishop out, I'll actually be thrilled. I can just take his pawn and his rook. Honestly, I have Maiden too, if he makes the wrong moves here. I'll probably play d8, look for Maiden too. I think that'll force him... Also, I do need to connect the rooks, just to be safe. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's very good. I have Maiden 2 here, so he has to be careful. Um, let's see. He, he could block in. He could block in. But then I can just push up. Hmm. I just go for that pawn. I guess if... I'm going to play... I'm going to threaten Maiden 1. Um, if he wants to trade queens or block in, that's fine. I'm just going to go for the pawn. This is kind of starting to be a bad square for the light square bishop here. So, But there's Maiden 1, so I mean, it's like, why wouldn't I? Yeah, okay. Oh, that's not quite a blunder. Yeah, that's a decent move there. That's a decent move. Can't really even check there. Hmm. I wonder where I go here. Maybe just fall back. I think just falling back, honestly. I'm thinking if I want to line the queen up with a light square bishop, or if it would better, or if it would be better to get it on a dark square, because I wouldn't mind this trade here, like on b5. I don't think I have any more menacing squares. I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, you know, I think I need to get onto a dark square because he's going to threaten with the rook here. And um, because my rooks are not connected, I'm going to have a hard way defending that. So I'd almost rather... kind of tuck the queen away where his rook can't attack it. 
Mm, but where can I really go? I guess I could go here. Hmm. E4. Even then, he just attacks with the rook. And then where do I go? I guess I could still tuck it away. Well, no, I could go for the check there. I'm just going to play e4. I don't think it's the worst move. I don't think it's the best move. Um, But it seems okay. I always have f4 next if I need to. His light square bishop is on a bad square too. So I might have to just play knight a6 and just get this horrible move out of the way. And if he wants to trade, so be it. Oh, okay. He wants to attack there. I mean, I guess. I guess g2 is just like the next best play. I don't know. He's just not threatening anything, that's the thing. All his moves are just very defensive. So. I have to get this rook out of the way, and then I can just kind of clean up his pawns here. I know it's generally not recommended to use the queen to like clean up pawns, but it just seems like in this specific scenario, it's okay. I wonder if I have any bigger threats. Okay, so if I go here, he's going to move his knight. Um, I can go check and then take that knight. Uh, but I'm going to be... Oh, no, I have to be really careful. I have to be really careful. Because if he takes my rook, I'm screwed. Because his queen is barreling down here and my rooks are not connected. I think I really just have to play... I probably could even play just d6 because it's defended this way. Or, excuse me, d7. Well, no, if he plays e4, I just take. No, but then he takes my he takes my rook and I lose. I'm really what's the word for it? Really punching myself for not developing <laughs> already. Not developing the knight already. I think e4 will actually be a really good move for him. I'll probably be forced to... Oh, wow. Okay, I was not expecting that. Um, That was a bad move for him, if I'm being honest. Yeah, he should have kept his rook over here. I have to threaten these other pieces. That's the thing. Taking the pawn. Yeah, he just removed his biggest threat, so... Taking the pawn. H2 just seems so passive. I want to get the other pieces off of the board. I don't care about H2. But I have to do something else. I suppose I could pin the knight. Pin the knight again. No, but then I'm just losing a queen. I don't know. Yeah, so I want to I want to play his potential moves in this uh, position. I think he could have won, honestly, because if he goes e4, if I don't take his rook, he wins. So if I take his knight on e4, uh, he basically just plays d8 and it's mate because the queen was protecting this diagonal, so the queen would have nowhere to run, and then the rooks are not connected. 
So yeah, I think he should have played knight e4. I think it would have been a really good move, and I don't think I would have been able to stop it. I would have had to play... Let me think. Yeah, I would have had to play something. Um, I think I would have had to probably sack a queen at that point or something like that. Yeah, I think knight e4 would have won him the game. Just because I haven't developed the knight. It's move 22 and I still have moved my knight. It's like really bad. <laughs> I think I'm just going to go knight d7 next just to get it out of the way. Unless he attacks the queen again, of course. Yeah, knight e4 would have been a really deadly move. It's It would have been a really big trap. The queen looks harmless, but she's actually cutting off the king from like one really important square, g7. So. Yeah. I kind of want to just get the queen, like, out of the mix altogether, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Um, I do have this check. You could just go protect with the knight again, so I think it's kind of pointless. Or maybe this is a better square for his knight, or maybe it's not. Hmm. Queen c7. There's a check, but then he just defends. And then we're kind of back at the drawing board. I think having this open file for the rook is better. So hmm. I'm kind of tempted to play like h6 too. h6 is a check and a kind of worst case scenario. We can just trade queens off here. Yeah, I'm actually just going to play h6. Sure, I don't get forked here. I'm gonna go h6. If he wants to attack, I can just take. The best thing that could happen here is we just trade queens off. That would be like the best thing that could happen. Interesting. Well, this does win material. Should just trade pieces off here, huh? Not even think about it. Queen d1 is winning, but I just can't get over there. This is surprisingly threatening. Um, queen g7. Queen g7. So this is a pawn, which I don't want to do. I think I'm just going to play g7. Trade queens off, totally fine. That's what he wants to do. I'm going to play g7. I 
I like G7. I also have a really sick fork next. Oh my. I think I have to go. Let's see, how can I just win? I think D4 is just winning. Hmm. I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna play D7. Yeah, I'm gonna play it safe. I don't wanna get carried away here. I'm just going to play soundly. Okay, we finally developed the knight, guys. We finally developed the knight. Move 26. I already know what everyone's going to say. Develop your pieces, castle. Your king. <laughs> I know, I know, okay? <laughs> Sometimes it's just hard. Sometimes it do be like that. I'm glad I didn't blunder that. <laughs> I didn't really check E5. <laughs> Whoops. Awkward. I guess it's defended by the queen anyway. Yeah, I want to remove the defender off of the rook. I'm totally fine with that. That bishop was pretty valuable to him, so. Um, can probably attack the queen next. This actually just pins his queen. Um, yeah, this is actually probably just GG. His queen's pinned here. I'm just going to be totally honest. He's been having a really rough game with the pins. His knight got pinned. Then his rook got pinned. Now his queen got pinned. Yeah, that's this is really tough to recover from. Um, yeah, let's see the game review. But either way, uh, GG, Setterman. Appreciate the game. 80.6. Yeah, I think... I'm willing to bet this blunder is, what was it, rook d2? Yeah, rook d2. Yeah, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't understand this move. Um, It was just kind of an oversight. It's like a pin that leads to a pin. <laughs> I'm not trying to give him a hard time or anything, but um, I felt like the game basically was thrown after that point. So. Okay, yeah, this position. I wasn't quite sure what to do. So it looks like taking on e4 is the idea here. I see. See, I always thought that the idea with the Karo was to keep one pawn on the d-file and uh, using your c-pawn to just 
take uh, on the D file. So like the C pawn is basically just like a living sacrifice. So that's why I was trying to maintain this uh, pawn on the C file here. But good to know though, I'm going to remember this for the future that it's okay to take on E4 and then yeah, he takes with the knight. And now what's nice about this is that you can sort of develop your pieces as you normally would. Um, so I imagine he'd probably what play bishop like d3 next. Oh, sure. What is that, knight g3? Oh, just attack this way. Oh, okay. I see. And then I'm probably forced to play what, like d7 or something? Oh, run it back to g6. Oh, so keeping the bishop along this diagonal. Okay. Um, good to know. I'm going to try to remember that. Getting the queen out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The check on a5, and then boom takes the knight. Oh, yeah, that would have been really nice. That would have been really nice. Okay, I need to remember this in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would have been a really nice move. Yeah, wow. Well. Oh, wow, 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 wow. That is a really nice line. I, I really like that line. That's cool. Okay, so e6, queen a5. Thing. What a move. Okay, cool. See, I know it says taking a pawn is the thing to do here, but I just don't like playing when the queen takes the G pawn. Um, I just tend to play poorly when that happens. And he had so much ammo hurling this way that I did I wasn't willing to give up the G pawn here. So I, I know it says it's a miss, but um I don't know. I I I thought it was okay. I was pretty happy about knight e4. The pin on this pawn uh I liked. This is bad, huh? No, I thought the engine usually likes sort of these pins. See, here's what I was expecting. I was expecting uh, g3, and then boom. I think he would have had to just protect it with the queen here, right? So then this pawn is still protected. But even then, not that great. Yeah, I think he just needed to protect his knight here. Probably even, what, knight e2? Would have been sufficient, right? 92. Yeah. And then from here, it was basically just downhill. Sure. So, yeah, getting the knight out of here would have probably been the play. I got a bit greedy with rook d8. So, yeah, move 18, knight d7 would have been the play. Yeah, and then I could have just put it on to uh, b6 there. Rook d8. I was trying to threaten mate. <laughs> but he made the right play here by defending d1 with the rook. So. I try not to get into the habit of doing this pawn hunting stuff. But, um, I don't know, it just seemed too good. But yeah, I guess... I guess going for the trades here, I was already up seven, so there was sort of no sense in in delaying that. I should have done that earlier. I'll, I'll have to keep that in mind. I'll have to keep that in mind. Oh, yeah, there was this one position here. Okay, so I think knight e4 was like the winning move for him, right? Yeah, wasn't it knight e4? Isn't this just like the best move he can play? Why is this so bad? Right? Because it's a bit of a trap, isn't it? Because he attacks my queen. And then if I retake the knight, it's a blunder and he gets made in one. Right? So what could I play? Oh, so I basically have to just trade rooks off here. Mm. I see. And then now I can go do what? Now I can take his knight. Okay. 
Yeah, okay, so if he played rookie four, I basically would have just had to trade rooks off, or knight e4, excuse me, I would have had to trade rooks off there. Okay. I think a lot of players would have missed that, though. I'm glad h6 was okay. This is a good find by him, actually. Oh, sure. c5 attack the queen at the same time. Uh, yeah. I actually like the position of his queen, even though maybe I didn't think about it during the game. Just the fact that his queen and his king were on the same diagonal here. This, or excuse me, same file here, and the file was about to be open. I had the really easy attack on his queen with the rooks. Um, it was pretty satisfying finding the pin on the queen. Yeah. I uh, probably could have used, yeah, the a8 rook. It probably wouldn't have mattered at this point, but... Yeah, this pin was pretty brutal. It, it was basically all over after that. I was kind of wondering what would happen if he's if he traded off here. And it just loses a rook. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, he'd have to play this probably to prevent the back rank. Or King C1, something like that. Either way, GG Setterman. Appreciate the game. Uh, that was a fun one. Um, I would have liked to have seen how this game played out if he didn't play that uh, Rook D2 move. Uh, could have been kind of interesting, I feel. But anyways, uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.